This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build beautiful websites with zero website building experience. A few months ago, we moved into our brand new workshop, which is on a large farm estate. And something that we've noticed lying all over the place are wooden pallets. Now, don't get me wrong, we love a good old pallet. Most of our older videos were made using them. However, once you've seen one pallet, you've kind of seen them all. Or have you? So our plan is to put a bit of a funky spin on the common pallet and make one entirely out of recycled plastic. Come on, surely you saw that coming. And since we want this to be as loud and obnoxious as possible, we're going to use every single colour we can get our hands on. So we're firing up our plastic extrusion machine as this is perfect for making all the beams that we need. We're also very proud to be introducing a new machine into our plastic recycling lineup. This guy! This is a fume extraction machine which helps to filter out any of the fumes given off by the heating process. Now, if you're using our regular panini press method, then fumes aren't really a concern as the temperature is kept nice and low. However, the extrusion machine heats the plastic up to a higher temperature to speed the whole process up, so it's just good to play it safe. The extruder works by using a feed screw to force the plastic granules through a heating barrel, which then comes out of the nozzle in a continuous stream of molten plastic. And by attaching a mold onto the end of the machine, we can extrude plastic into any shape we like. For this project, we're switching up from our normal HDPE plastic to polypropylene. All of the plastic that we're using in this project has been sourced from recycled DVD cases from our good friend Tom. Polypropylene is ideal for this project as it's much more rigid than HDPE, which is going to make it much more suitable for carrying heavy stuff. To make it nice and easy to switch between our two beam moulds, we're swapping out our regular nozzle for this quick release plate. Since we already had some white polypropylene in the machine, we let this run for a few seconds until the colour ran a continuous yellow. Then we added our mould and let the machine do its thing. To completely fill the mould, it took around 8 minutes going at full whack. Once the beam mold was almost completely full, we placed a wooden block at the end and added a little bit of pressure just to make sure the whole thing was nice and full. Then we swapped out the mold and let the first beam cool whilst the next one was extruding. We found it helpful to cool the end of the mould in water just for a few seconds to help the end solidify before leaving it to cool on the side for about 15 minutes. And then it's just a case of rinse and repeat until we've got beams for every colour we need. safe to say we are in love with these super bright colours. We didn't want the base of the palette to take away from that rainbow top, so for this we just extruded a load of beams in black. So before we start cutting and assembling our colourful creation, we want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Woohoo! <laughs> we are massive fans of Squarespace. As well as having them support our channel, we genuinely love using their platform to build and manage our own website. As some of you may know, we have an online store where we make and sell products made from 100% recycled plastic. We chose Squarespace to help us set this up as we knew we would have full control over how our products would be presented. Neither of us have any experience building websites, so it was a little daunting at first. However, choosing Squarespace meant the whole process was super user friendly and we got to grips with their interface really quickly. One feature that came in really handy for us was to add multiple 
multiple variants to the different products we have listed. What that means for us is that as well as having our 12 custom colour combinations listed, we can also offer options such as whether or not you want drainage holes on your plant pots. So if you're looking to set up a website so that you too can offer optional drainage holes, as well as a lot of other things, then head on over to squarespace.com slash brothersmake to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code brothersmake. A big thank you to Squarespace. Now let's go assemble this pallet. Since we need all of the beams to be the same size, we set up a few stop blocks on our Triton miter saw to make the whole process super efficient. And polypropylene is no different to HDPE in terms of the waste produced as we can save everything, shred it down and recycle it again later. So regular pallets tend to have these big chunky corner blocks. So for this we busted out one of our bench leg moulds as this has a much bigger cross section than our regular beam mould. Well, that was easy. One thing that we did notice when cutting polypropylene compared to HDPE is that all the swarf kind of fuses itself back together. This makes the cleanup job really quite easy, but also gives you these really funky little plastic rainbow blobs. <laughs> Once all our pieces were cut, we were finally ready to assemble. If you've ever tried to take apart a wooden pallet, you'll know that they're held together with about a thousand nails in every corner. But because this type of plastic is more brittle, we didn't think that nails would be the right choice, so we opted for screws. We made sure to drill the right size pilot hole and countersink to prevent any splitting and then popped in two screws at each joint. Once the black frame was made, it was simply a case of attaching all the coloured beams on top. And we even used the offcuts from earlier to help us space all of the pallets nice and evenly before we screwed them down. So that's it assembled. So we think it's about time we set it free so it can go and join its slightly less attractive cousins out in the wild. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I think we definitely succeeded in making a pallet which looks a little bit better than all the rest. But the key thing is whether it's any good as a pallet or not. And safe to say, we were pleasantly surprised with how much weight it could hold and how sturdy it felt. And now all that's left to do is to sit and wait for an opportunistic hipster to come along, break it all down, and turn it into a bar for their garden. At least it'll be fully recyclable. Structurally, it works great as a pallet, but the main drawback is probably how long it takes to make one of these. But if there was a way to make these viable on a larger scale, it would definitely be a fantastic way to use up some of the waste we have all over the planet. 
Thanks so much for watching the video. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you did enjoy it or have any suggestions on what we could have done differently, then we'd love to see your comments down below. And finally, a massive thank you goes to our incredible, wonderful, beautiful patrons. It's their ongoing support that makes this whole thing possible. So thank you so much. See you on the next one, guys.